Right. All right. So let's move on to R.I.P.D. R.I.P.D., which <laughs> is uh, based on a comic book, was one of the biggest bombs of the year. And, you know, stars Jeff Bridges and Ryan Reynolds, you know. All right. So, so the thing about R.I.P.D., the only reason to even consider it at all as a nerdy movie, because it is based on a comic book and it does have kind of a sci-fi or fantasy premise, but... I, it's not a comic book that anyone really is familiar with or cared about, and it wasn't a good movie, and, you know, like, nobody, I don't think anyone really so do thought you it also, was that good. Do you also discount Red 2 for the same reason? Um, yeah, Red 2 doesn't doesn't feel terribly nerdy to me. It's It's more nerdy in the sense of, like, for people who are into, like, that generation of actors, you know, like, because of, of all the people that are in it, and, like... So it's it's almost like more more nerdy for like movie fans than for for comic book fans, I would say. Okay, I, I agree with you. Talking about right. Red Two, I don't think RIPD yeah. even, even reaches that level. All right. Well, how's about the Wolverine? Okay. Right. I mean, that, the that, Wolverine. Something. That that is for sure nerdy. It's yeah, not Wolverine. as nerdy as it as it would have been if it's Darren Aronofsky oh. had, had directed it. That might have yeah. been our number one if. It had been. That might have yeah. been uh, my number it, one movie of all time if he had done that. But yeah, that's a good point. I think. Like, I mean, it might have been actually been rated R. Uh, oh, well. Would have been like disturbing, at least mildly so. It'd be great. Like, uh, it's such a disappointment. It's almost as much of a disappointment as when um um no maybe it's a little, just a uh, more disappointment um of when Dominic West um you know aka McNulty turned down. Uh, the role of Mance Raider. That was a big buzzkill when you did that. Yeah, although the difference is, like, Aronofsky was going to do it. Like, he was no, going to do yeah. it. And, like, you know... Yeah. Um, he uh, like, Mc- raises kid Mc- or something, Mc- whatever. Like a McNulty. selfish... What a loser. <laughs> what, what, I forget what McNulty's name is, but... Uh, Dominic yeah, West. Or, Dominic West, right. He, wasn't, right. he was never, like, going to do it. He just didn't know what it was, and he was like, oh, whatever, I don't care. I'm not going to do it. All right, so I think we can just say, nerdy, not as nerdy. What about Blue Jasmine, the Woody Allen movie? Yeah. I haven't seen it, but um, no, probably not. Okay, fair enough. How's about Sharknado? Uh, it gets it gets some gets Does some that points. Count? It wasn't released in theaters, was it? Uh, limited run, limited run. But I, don't, I guess I don't even know if that counts. All right, fine. Well, then let's skip it. All right. How about but Elysium? Elysium. From the same guy who did District Nine. Definitely a nerdy movie. Yep. Uh, I haven't seen it. Was it good. Uh, I heard. I heard it was good-ish. It just yeah. I think there's no way you can call it that is nerdy as Pacific Rim. It's just too generic no. sci-fi. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. Like sci-fi is nerdy, but like generic sci-fi is isn't really right. so and nerdy. It totally it's is. Kinda, totally. I saw a little bit of Elysium. I didn't see the whole thing. Like District Nine really isn't generic sci-fi for right. the most part, anyway. So all right. Well, how about In a World? The thing is, it's nerdy in this sense. It's got a bunch of, like, comedy nerd people in it, and it's about the world of voice acting. Okay, that's nerdy. So it is pretty nerdy. The question, though, is, is it nerdier than Robots vs. Monsters? I don't think so. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I say no. So let's move on, then, to Kick-Ass 2. <laughs> Hold on, I need another bucket. <laughs> Have you actually seen it? Yep. Oh, so what do you think? Well, did I just not describe my opinions of it? How is your <laughs> Did I not get a second bug? Here's the thing. I, I like the first one. There were, like, some issues with, like, the first one a little bit, some, like, kind of cheesy, uh, stupid stuff. For the most part, I liked it. The second one was just, like, a kind of stupid, like, kind of teen movie. Just th- throw in stuff where, like, it's it's like, I really mean this right now. And then the, the other character responds. And then... I really mean this in counter to what you were saying. Oh, I see that you really mean this. You know, like, different characters, if they were trying to explain something to someone else, just like these cheesy ways of doing it, maybe I'm not making sense. But one thing that really bothered me in it was, um, you know, like, the hit girl, or is that, was that her name? Yes. Hit girl? You know, the whole thing was she, she, she became, like, you know, she showed that she could be a, a pretty, you know, a teen girl. You know what I mean? That that whole thing that they that they did in the middle, or oh, like the movie, yes. yeah, yeah, it was just like it was just dumb, like like it didn't have focus to it. It it was like there were some funny things going on in it, but um, I thought I thought it was really just ugh, not good. I think that's fair. All right, well, how about here's another interesting contender. It was called The World's End. 
And this was a our yeah, parents did like that. They did like it. They said that. Oh, they, that was uh, that's a the Simon Pegg Edgar Wright movie. Yeah, right. Uh, our parents did see it. Binge. Mm-hmm. And they didn't hate it at all. In fact, our mother heavily recommended it. So it you know, it's a it's from Edgar Wright, you know, who who did Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, and of course, Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz. And this again is another sort of you know, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, homage, pastiche, that's also filled with a bunch of comedy people hiding deeper messages, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's definitely, so already, yeah, it's definitely nerdy. So has anyone else seen it? No. No. I would recommend this one. If you remember my uh, my buddy uh, Jehuda, mm -hmm. uh, I, I said we should go see it, and he's like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and he he really liked it, and he you know he he shook my hand afterwards, and he said thanks for the and idea. Then he, then he flapped his wings and flew off into the night. <laughs> yeah, he was he is magical. That's true. I think it is pretty nerdy. So I can't help but noticing, Jeremy, that you skipped right over uh, the the Mortal Instruments City of Bones. Oh uh, well, that's another failure. One another try to kids book Twilight ish rip off type thing that was pretty well. Received as bo in book form, but mm -hmm. failed in movie form. Because well, you know, it's really. I mean, everyone's trying to copy Hunger Games and Twilight and Harry Potter, and what they don't realize is that you know you really need to have like an interesting character in an interesting world, or just right. You know, so it's right, not, right. You know, it's a different. It's hard to do, obviously. Yeah. Well, I think clearly the nerdiest one so far, and best nerdy ones uh, so far, once we get to August thirtieth. Is uh, One Direction? This is us. Oh, <laughs> yeah, right. Of course. It, although, uh, so, uh, uh, legions of screaming fans. <laughs> yeah. See, you just you just discounted it out. Your legions of screaming fans just made it not nerdy. Sorry, you <laughs> lose. Ah, uh, damn it! I thought uh, we were looking at what's going to get us the the, the coolest. It's going to help us be the coolest in right. 2014. Well, let's move down to September 13th. And one of the finest movies of the year. But you're you're skipping the Riddick movie. Yeah, we shouldn't mention that for a second. Apparently, oh, you skip the, Riddick. Which oh, okay. it, it sucks. Because really I, like I, I like the Chronicles of Riddick, but yeah. yeah, and Vin Diesel like basically paid for the movie itself. You know, so I guess you can. There's some there's some aspects that are nerdy there, but I mean, even if even if we're not going to actually like you know consider it one of the nerdiest movies, like at least we have to we have to name drop it. Right? Yeah. Like, we can't okay. just skip over it. Fair enough. And we did. <laughs> All right, let's move on to uh, one of the most offensive movies of the year, Jutopia. <laughs> uh, Jutopia, terrible, terrible movie. Wait, but it has such a good name, it looks like it's a quality movie. It's about this guy, a non-Jew, who decides that he wants a Jewish girlfriend slash wife because he, quote, never wants to make another decision again. I... <laughs> I did not know that this movie existed. <laughs> that, this is, oh my God. This is like and complete we all, news is, to me. We could have Jutopia. Just, Why have I not seen this movie? If we got, you know, I think we could like, you know how like the riff tracks and Mystery Science Theater have like commentaries. Yeah. I think yeah. we could have an amazing commentary for this for terrible, Jutopia. terrible okay. movie. Okay. Ugh, awful movie. God. It's so bad. So bad. I'm I'm actually like astonished that I didn't even know this movie existed. I think I had heard of it, but yeah, it's it's terrible, and I didn't even get into some of the other awful, awful, offensive things about it. There's more. That's just, <laughs> that's just the main part. It's pretty great title. That's though. just scratching the surface of the Kanish. Oh, I, <laughs> awful, awful. I I love the title, Utopia. That's great. Well, the title isn't actually is is the least offensive of <laughs> anything. It's not so bad at all. All right, let's uh let's move along to a Don John. Yes. So, who here has seen this movie? I saw Don John. I liked it a lot. Yeah, it's very oh, good. This, it's definitely it's definitely one of the movies of the year. I mean, it's, totally, it's pretty, totally. It's it's pretty clear. Um, I don't know if it's if we can inch it out in terms of nerdiness, but definitely what was cool about it. Well, one thing I was impressed with with the movie, just I mean, overall, very well put together and paced very well, but definitely. Joseph Gordon-Levitt um, incorporated kind of these sort of, I guess, indie film tropes and things like that. It had, it had a little bit of an indie feel to it as well. Not totally, but it did in in, 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 in certain ways. I think he utilized them well. I mean, some just like the, the intimate 
like 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 camera work um you know uh, the fact that the story it was it, it seemed very low budget in a lot of ways you know yeah, and it might have been and, and also I, I liked it a lot i like the character is i like the way he directed it mm-hmm. I thought, you know i thought the script which he wrote was also pretty funny and mm-hmm. i liked the way the characters came out and i also really liked how it, it ended yeah, yeah, I as, I, I like, agree with you about yeah. all of those things. Um, but I it's still it, other than the fact that it's like just a little bit like indie because it was kind of a small movie, really and like said, kind of kind of low budget. It's yeah. not right. really that nerdy. Right. Right. But here's here's one of the things that I mentioned with the whole indie film thing, and I and I, I agree with you in the end. But I uh uh what's the name? Uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt has like this website or something called HitRecord.com. I don't know a lot about it, but the whole thing is he's he he gets like like people who are on it, he gets them to like submit their, their, their like short films or something like that. Right, Jeremy? It's all sorts of collaborative stuff. People do right. artwork, films, music, yeah. you know, et cetera. So, so he's got exposed and there are people, I have, I have actually some friends who are like specifically, the girls, of course, but they're specifically into Joseph Gordon-Levitt. And so he's got a little bit of the sort of cultish following around, around him. And that doesn't happen with every actor. Cause it, cause it's not just people being behind him just, oh, cause he's hot or something like that. Um, like in terms of like, he's got a little bit of an interesting thing going on. He's got his own sort of brand going. So anyway. Yeah, but uh, I think we, I think we, all right. Well, so good movie, but not that nerdy. All right. I so, just want to, I just want to mention just to shout out while we're on the subject of Joseph Gordon Levitt that, uh, he is, he's rumored to be, or not rumored. It's actually like fact now that he's, he's going to be putting together or trying to put together a Sandman movie. Yeah, he's producing it. He's producing oh, I, I it. I need to finish that movie. That book. I think I, I thought I read that he was actually going to star in it, but that might have been, okay, what he I might be remembering was, wrong. What he said was, he's definitely going to be producing it. Anything past that is still up in the air. So he might direct it. He might write part of it. He might star in it. None of the, I think anything, he'll though. do, I think he'll, he'll do a good job with, with whatever he does with it. Uh, oh, yeah, he, I think he, he clearly has. A, I'm sure he's clearly read it, mm-hmm. and he's clearly a fan of it. Considering <laughs> he he sought it out to do. Because uh-huh. why else would he want to work on it? Why else would he want to be a producer for it? Yeah, right. So I, the I thing is, that, I the think thing is, I don't, I don't really see any way that you could really like successfully make that movie. But I would like to see him try. I would like to see him try, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it as the nerdiest movie of 2018 or whatever. <laughs> whatever. I mean, right. Who knows? <laughs> All right. Let's move on to another interesting candidate, Gravity. Okay. And I didn't see that. I heard it was really good, though. It is good. Sam, have you seen it? No. No, I didn't I didn't get a chance to see it. Now, but... It's interesting because, you know, yeah. the whole sort of space aspect of it and how they – there's a lot of stuff that they care about the science. It's not 100% scientifically accurate, although they do a lot of stuff right. That gives it a sort of nerdy aspect to it. You know, it's by uh, Alfonso Cuaron. Right. And I feel like it's definitely not – as nerdy as Pacific Rim, but it's definitely got some nerd cred to it. I would give it that. Okay. Uh, yeah. I would also recommend it. You know, Sounds legit. You probably have a, you've missed your chance to see it in the theater, at least in, unless it gets re-released. I think it's definitely recommended. All right, let's move on to the interesting mech exploitation film Machete Kills by Robert Rodriguez. <laughs> 